Rush was a band that was definitely known more for their musical chops than their behavior offstage. In fact, they seem like they have a pretty clean-cut image. That was until 2003 when guitarist Alex Lifeson was tasered and beaten by security in a Florida hotel. Let's talk about what happened in today's video. Gives a new meaning to dinner at the Ritz. Rush guitarist Alex Lifeson and his family were attending a New Year's Eve party to ring in 2004 at a Naples, Florida Ritz-Carlton hotel. It was an expensive event, a black tie affair costing each couple $650. Hired to perform at the hotel that night was 71-year-old Freddie Cole, the youngest brother of the late legendary singer Nat King Cole. At one point during the party, Justin, who was the 33-year-old son of Lifeson, was allegedly so intoxicated, he jumped on stage and tried to interrupt the performance. Cole would recall to the Naples Daily News, he said something like, how about a nice round of applause for this Count Bassey? I wouldn't even look up. He knew damn well my name ain't Count Bassey. Cole, for his part, had never heard of the band Rush or Lifeson and told the newspaper when he first heard about the name Rush, he would say, I thought they were talking about Rush Limba. It wasn't just Cole who wasn't impressed with the family's behavior. As he told the newspaper, I know when they came up and started dancing all over the dance floor, several people left. They were doing some gyrations, I guess having a good time, he'd say. The hotel's night shift manager would radio the front desk, asking them to call the sheriff's office to report the disorderly guests. When the police arrived, they took Lifeson's son out of the ballroom into the hallway, and the guitarist soon followed. When Justin started to resist arrest, he was tackled to the ground and tasered and Lifeson, who felt like the police were overreacting, intervened and was punched in the face by one of the sheriff deputies, who broke his nose. Lifeson and his son would be arrested and taken down to the local police station. The police, for their part, alleged that the guitarist spit in the face of a deputy and kicked one of the officers down a stairwell. Lifeson's party would claim that the Ritz staff exaggerated the behavior of the family to the police, who in turn used excessive force. The family claimed the hotel staff told the police over the phone that the Lifeson family was, and I quote, just basically trashing the place, jumping on furniture and ripping things apart. The next day, the guitarist would show up to talk to the press, wearing his clothes from the previous night, which were covered in blood. His mugshot would also get released to the press. He would tell the media following his arrest, they didn't like the way we were dancing, apparently. Initially, the guitarist was facing four felony charges, including assault on a law enforcement officer, and the charges against Alex and his son Justin would eventually be dropped from felonies to misdemeanors, and the guitarist would serve 12 months of probation and pay court order costs instead of facing trial and possibly going to jail. But there's another part to the story. We all know Rush fans are pretty loyal, and this instance was no different. Following the news of the guitarist's arrest, the Collier County Sheriff's Office was inundated with emails and phone calls from fans of the band. Fans were angry about how the guitarist was treated, and it got so bad that the sheriff's office had to release a statement on the matter, revealing that the hotel fell out of their jurisdiction, and that the emails, some of which were so violent and threatening, were no fun to read. Even the local newspaper, The Daily News, came under fire from Rush fans for printing Lifeson's home address in the story of the arrest. The newspaper would claim they treat everyone equally, rich or poor. Several years after the incident, Lifeson's family filed a lawsuit against the police for excessive force and the hotel for negligence. The court would rule in the deputy's favor, but the judge also ruled that the hotel should not have exaggerated the actions of the guitarist family to the police dispatcher, ruling that the hotel staff's lies, and I quote, knowingly put Justin at a greater risk of physical injury. That does it for today's video, guys. Thanks for watching. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe. We'll see you again on Rock and Roll True Stories. Take care.